Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, on Bloody Ridge, it's gonna be a ZVP featuring Sulky and Best. RJB Replay, everyone! YouTube.com slash at RJBTV, top right, it's gonna be our guy, Sulky. And in the bottom left, it is Best. This is about a 2019 replay, again, it's on Bloody Ridge, a map that's kind of fallen out of favor. But it's kind of a hard game or a hard map for Zerg to beat a Perkos player on. Let me show you why. Because there are so few places to expand. You can expand here for your natural. It is fairly protected. You got a third base here, maybe a third base here. And that's about it. This is so far away and so hard to protect. Right top left and bottom right. And that leaves you with this center base. We've got Reavers. We've got Storm Drop locations. We've got Zealot Run By locations. Holding this as a Zerg player is super hard. So we will see. We will see if it comes down to that here on Bloody Ridge today. Terror of the Overlord moving out again. Terror of the Overlord merch at falconpaladin.store. Check it out. And an overpool opening here from Soul Key. Just scouting, just scouting to see if he wants to go Nexus first, or Forge Expand, or maybe Gateway Expand. And based on this opening, I kind of feel like we need a Forge here, right? It's not a pool first opening, but Lings are going to show up super early compared to a Hatch first. So Forge it is, into a Nexus. And this probe is going to be scouting for a very long time. Ah, okay. So, Sulky... I was going to say... Sulky doesn't want this probe scouting. Oh, very good! Oh, okay. So, he was attacking it to get some distance on it so he could expand. Very good. Very good, Sulky. I did not realize that, but then I did. <laughs> Hope you're all doing very, very well. What did we have? We had the Super Bowl on Sunday, so you NFL fans are in some kind of a funk and depression because football's gone until, like, September. I guess we get some training camp stuff in August, but, like, football's gone for a long time. The rest of you, The Last of Us, continues to be awesome. Man, I this latest episode of The Last of Us, they aired it on last Friday because they didn't want to compete with the Super Bowl. Which is fair. They didn't want to air it on the usual Sunday night time. So they did it on Friday, and it was fantastic. I mean, I'm just... I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just going to tell you. As someone who's played the game and loves the game... Everybody who's played the game loves the game, I think. They're based coming in here. The sheer ability of these showrunners to change things... Because you have to. You're adapting from a video game to a TV show. You have to change some things for it to make sense. So they change things, but they are so very, very, very respectful of the source material. It's Neil Druckmann, who originally wrote The Last of Us and produced and directed it. And then we've got Craig Manzel, or Manzin, Manzin, I think, who's just a huge fan of The Last of Us too. So these are people who love the source material and know the source material backwards and forwards. These people are the ones who are doing this and killing it. So, I hope this is a lesson. I really hope this is a lesson for people who decide to adapt video game projects in the future, or if you're just trying to adapt a book to a TV show or a movie. Can we please pick people who love the source material? Because it didn't, like with Halo, no. The showrunner for Halo didn't have any respect for the games. The showrunners for The Witcher TV show, no respect for the books or the games. Like, it's just, we need to stop doing this, that's all. All right, third base. Up for Sulky. Got a Hydrolisk Den. Are we going for a Hydro Bus? The speed upgrade indicates that we are. Speed is an aggressive upgrade. Range is more of a uh, more of a defensive upgrade. If you're worried about incoming Zealots or Dragoons or something. Early Dragoons are pretty dumb against Zerg, but... Once the Lurkers come out, they're amazing. So, handful of Lings. Overlord scouting out. Terry getting out of here. Is there a... Did he not go... He is. He's going Stargate. I was like, did he not go Stargate? He's going Stargate. Because of course he is. It's a PVZ. What else do you do? And we're starting to see some hydras being produced here. Drones are still in production here a little bit at least. We'll see if he makes another round here or if he's just going for hydras. Is this ye old hydra bust? 
which we've seen a billion times in ZVPs, and is kind of old hat, but it is always interesting because it might work and it might not. I mean, it really comes down to, does the Protoss player have Storm, and do they have speed for their Zealots? And the fact that Best is tossing up a couple extra gateways and the Citadel of Adun indicates that he wants speed for his Zealots and he wants Storm for his High Templar, which don't exist yet because he can't make them. But here we go. I mean, range upgrade next. Good cannon positioning here. Busting in here to this position, you're getting hit by cannons, and it's not great. You can't really focus the cannons because the Zealots will jump on you and hack you to death with their side blades. So it's... Oh, this is early. Lings go for the run by... Oh, Lings getting some free hits on these cannons who are more interested in attacking the Hydras. But that means the cannon dies. That's why you have two cannons. Okay. Deep breath. And the Hydras are just starting their terrible campaign. Now they can attack without worrying about a cannon murdering them. They don't have the range upgrade yet, so they couldn't get this close. But now they can. Excellent. So, Gateway Dying would suck. Forge Dying would suck. Best is on his back foot here for sure, but he's steadily working on leg enhancements. He's steadily, I don't know, maybe warping in a Templar Archives would be super cool at this point in the game, but it's too late. You can't start at Templar Archives now and get Storm. It's too long to do that. So, the Gateway dies, and the Forge is going to die. The range upgrade for the Hydras is dead. This is this Hydra timing that every Protoss player has nightmares about. They're just like, uh, can we? Could this never happen again, please? But unfortunately, this is StarCraft. Hydras bust in, pull back. Two cannons firing, bunch of zealots here. Their leg upgrade is almost done, and that's going to make it really hard on these Hydras. Speed lots against Hydras. They're just, oh, look at him. He's microing too. Move past attack. Move past attack. Don't A move because they will try to get close enough to attack and then maybe like, not get close enough. So you gotta move up, attack, move up, attack. It's like Lings. You gotta move past your target and then attack them. It's a pretty simple micro trick. Like, it's nothing too crazy. Anyway, Corsair has no kills because there are 800 Hydralisks out on the field already. Speed's done! Best says, get out of here! Yes! Yeah, now we have to go with our Hydra micro. Kite, 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 kite. Oh, that was a good... Okay, that was good for the Protoss, bad for the Zerg. What a sick little setup there. Solki says, I have enough Hydras to win? Question mark. He's trying to pull the Hydras back as they get injured. That was some sick micro for sure from him. And I'm just waiting for a Templar Archives. Like, Solki is really interested in going to Hydralisk today. I mean, it doesn't matter what Solki is going. Psionic Storm is good understand the reluctance to there we go finally a Templar archive starts warping in but two base to three base here everything's okay I mean best lost a gateway and a forge but nothing too crazy overlords are dying thanks to the Corsairs that continue to fly about two kills on the Corsair probably two overlords be my guess and then on the counterattack, the zealots say so you didn't want to fight us over there do you want to fight us over here and you don't mm, but then you get that critical mass of Hydras, and the critical mass of Hydras says Zealots be gone. But if you don't have enough Hydras, the Zealots do not be gone. Like the Macro Hatch, obviously. Like going for a lair here. He did go for the Hydra bust, and best held on. Soul Key is supply blocked, which is an occupational hazard being a Zerg player against Protoss because Corsairs are going to be a problem all the time. Macro Hatch? Evolution Chamber. He's like, fine, maybe I'll invest in a Spore. I don't know. Finally, Storm's coming in at 850. High Templar in production, because you need them to have energy for storms, and the more energy they have, the better they are. Zealots moving out for another round of attacks. I thought maybe they'd have plus one, but they don't. <laughs> I mean, it's on the way, but it's going to take a minute to get there. Even some Dark Templar. Neat. RJB sent me this replay. So again, check him out. YouTube.com slash RJBTV. Ling Hydra. That's what the Zerg player wants against these Zealots. Because Ling Hydra. The Zealots can't get on top of the Hydras because the Lings are buffering for them. Yep. See? See how no Hydras died there? Because there were some Lings in the mix? That's everything. It's the synergy, right? It's Marines and Medics. Synergy. Lings and Hydras. Synergy. Dragoons and Zealots. Synergy. Your Tier 1 unit with your tier 1.5 unit, work together to make everybody better. Yeah, try to do a bit of a zealot run by here. No, you can't. Oh, free Hydra though. 
the third. Oh, DT on the ramp. Yeah. Oh, you can't block everything, though. You can block these hydras. Kind No, you can't. Never mind. DT having a great time, but uh, this third base for best is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, man. Oh, Storm is here, though. Okay, okay, okay. Storm plus DT plus Zealots. I don't know. Are there really not any Zealots in the neighborhood that can stop this from happening? Where are you guys? Well, ah, Nexus down. DT couldn't stop it. Zealots late to the party. That's horrendous. That is horrendous for best. He is making Dark Archon. I was going to say, it's an RJB replay. He sends me replays with Dark Archons because he knows how much you love them. You, the Brood War viewer, right now. Okay, Mutalisks, because there aren't that many Corsairs running around. He might have actually killed the one that was cruising around, because I don't think I see any Corsairs anywhere right now. Uh, sometimes they hide here on top of Nexuses, but, um, nope. We go to yellow, just... Yeah, no Corsairs. Bad. So the Mutalisk's job is to snipe off High Templar, and once the High Templar are dead, Ling Hydra just wins. Ling Hydra kills. If there's no splash damage in your army again, as a Protoss player, Ling Hydra kills it. Especially with upgrades, especially with Adrenal, which there isn't yet, but... Oh, this, is, this is tough. This is tough sledding for best. He's just... I mean... This sucks. I don't know what else to tell you. His production tab is not Corsairs. Because he can't make enough of them to deal with this. Worker count is 44 to 29. So Best had a massive worker lead. It's not as big now, but it's still pretty big. And the third base is warping in. This time defended by cannons and High Templar with enough energy for at least two storms. Nope, not yet. Almost two storms. Very close to two storms. Muta Scout, ye old Dark Archon. We're going to get a Maelstrom. Maelstrom Research. Because you got to get that first. Man, not enough Mutas. Oh, it's only three Mutas. So this is annoying, right? This isn't game winning at this stage. There's only three Mutalisks here. And it is the Maelstrom Research. Excellent. So that will... Oh, okay. Good. Great storm. Great storm. Two kills on this Muta. Maybe he gets three. He's going to hold position. I think he's in hold position right here. He's got enough targets to keep him busy for a while, which is fun. And storm. All right. Dark Archon staring at the camera. He is trying to intimidate us with his alpha status. Because he is so cool with his shoulder pads and his stick body. What a weird character model. It didn't look that way in the original Brood War, but when they remastered it, they made the the body type of the Archons a lot more explicit, and it's weird stuff, man. Archon Splash! Ow! Okay, so these Mutas, they are YOLO Mutas. They're here to die. Oh, just kidding. They're escaping. See you later, third base under attack. Lings. Mm. Again, this High Templar's got two storms available. Oh, never mind. It uses storms on the, the Mutalisks. <gasps> no storms available. Oh, but I don't think... Dude, if Sulky knew that, I think he busts up this ramp and maybe tries to win the game right there. But he doesn't. So he pulls back. He's working on a queen's nest. He wants adrenal for his lings. Every Zerg player wants adrenal for his lings for Christmas. Singularity charge getting researched here too. Queen's nest done. How instant is the hive timing? Well, instant. Pretty darn. Maybe not perfectly instant, but Sulky's a good player. Sulky's looking good. I'll put a link to Sulky's uh, stream here in the description because he's been having some money troubles. I guess he got scammed a couple times and uh, he's just he's struggling. So if you love Sulky and you want to help him out, go watch his stream. You can throw money at him too. I'm not sure how easy that is for like non-Koreans to do, but it can't be that hard, right? Anyway, check him out. Check out Soul Key. Link in the description to his stream. I keep thinking this is an expansion, but just, you know, preparing it for later. Again, this space is really important. Extremely important that this exists. Because right now, it's 3-3 three to three base. And I don't know why Soul Key is not getting a fourth. I'm really confused by this. Like, he doesn't really have the money for it. For one. He just keeps making more sets of lings. His hive's going to finish. Now he's got to spend money on Adrenal, which is 200-200. 
So that's not cheap. Let's see. Let's see how fast Adrenal comes in or if he goes for a Defiler Mound first. And Adrenal instantaneously. There it goes. Drains the tiny bank that he has, but he had enough money for it. I mean, that's, that is high level timing, ladies and gentlemen. When you have just barely enough money to start Adrenal as soon as that hive finishes, you're paying attention. You're paying attention to how much cash you have on the hand at all moments. Or again, maybe it's a timing thing. These Lings do not want to engage with Zealots until they have Adrenal because these guys have plus two attack and speed and they're mean. These are zero, zero Lings. So these are going to be zero, zero Lings with Adrenal. Eventually, plus one melee attack will finish, but Adrenal is faster than melee. So these will be zero, zero Adrenal Lings, which we don't see a lot. But hey, the Adrenal increases the attack speed to such an extent that it's basically, it's better. It's better than plus one attack. It's better than like plus three attack. Increasing the attack speed by 40%? Yeah. Rather have Adrenal than have, you know. How many attack upgrades does it take to equal what Adrenal gives you in damage per second? Someone do the math. Someone do the math for me. How many attack upgrades does it take for a Link to do as much damage without Adrenal as it does with zero attack upgrades and Adrenal? I'm curious. Good snipe on that ob. If you do that, I'll pin your comment because I don't do math. Finally, a fourth base from Soul Key. What is, is there a base I don't know about? Sometimes this happens and it's like, you idiot, there's a fourth base minerals right here the whole time. Nope, it wasn't. Maelstrom! Catch it, damn Hydras! Oh, <laughs> that hurt. And it wasn't a Maelstrom storm combo. It was just Maelstrom and then we kill you normally. Dude, this base down here. Dude, best. Uh, so best is out macroing Soul Key right now. He's taking a fourth base before the Zerg player's fourth base is even halfway done. So not great. Not great if you're a Soul Key fan. Best has been macroing super hard. He's got multiple Dark Archons because he's an absolute boss. Yeah, man. Best is an excellent, excellent Protoss player. We like him a lot. He's getting a robotic support bay every... Every time a Protoss loses to a Zerg player on the channel, there's someone that's like, they didn't get Reavers in time. And you know what? You're usually right. So we'll see. I mean, Robotic Support Bay finished up. Do we get a... Coming up a ramp into Lurker Town is a little bit tough, but the Archon can take some punishment. Oh, he stormed his own Archon. Okay, Dark Swarm is up. There's a Dark Archon in here. Just kidding, it's dead, thanks to Lurker and Storm, I guess. Storming your own stuff is something that Best is doing a little bit right now. But there's no Dark Swarm available, so this base is gonna die. And if this base dies, I don't know. Dark Swarmlings with Adrenal, and plus one, plus one. Oh yeah, this is what they're here for. Lurker support, Adrenalings, Zealots are like, help, bad. Another Dark Swarm, but further down this time, there it is. Lurker burrows into position. This base is going to die. This base is going to die. Both players knock the other guy down to three bases. But Best is okay with that. And Sulky should not be. However, Best does have some probes down here. And that 12 o'clock base of Sulky's didn't have any workers at it. So, worker count in an immense amount of trouble. Dark Swarm! Pushing in. Okay, so the Dark Swarm Lurker pushes these guys away until they get some Reavers out, or I guess Dark Templar are on the way. Does he have any Reavers? He's got shuttles. I saw him producing a shuttle. He's getting shuttle speed anyway. Where is the shuttle? Where is the shuttle that contains the Reavers? That's not Reavers at all. Never mind. Feedback's also really good on Defilers, if you're interested. Wait until they consume a whole bunch and then feedback them. Sick. That's why they consume and immediately cast. Oh, there's the feedback. Nice. Okay, so that Defiler dies. There's two more back here ready to consume as necessary. Plague gets tossed down. Yeah, Sulky's not winning this game without the power of Plague. What is this? We're shuttling. We're shuttling Zealots over. Oh, 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 oh. Only one Scourge, though. Shuttle survives, but it gets scouted. I don't know why you're attacking the Queen's Nest. Oh, another Scourge took down the shuttle. And enough Adrenalings are here to make sure these Zealots have a really, really bad day. I mean... Yeah, a little Muta support, but still. Dark Swarm stuff here from Solki. He's down 165 to 132 supply. Not where you want to be. Another feedback. Takes down a Defiler. Dude, this Dark Archon's got two kills. And they're both feedbacks on Defilers. 
Sick. Sick, sick stuff. But I don't know that Soul Key can keep pace with this. A three base to three base is rough. A fourth base getting taken very sneakily up top left by Bess. But I think some Zerg blood indicates that was scouted, actually. Soul Key coming down. Does he want to expand here now that he's got Lurkers and Darkstorm protecting it? Or does he want to drop? I've always said drops increase the certain chances of winning by about 40%, it feels like. And he does. Okay. And by that, I mean... There you go. He's dropping inside the main base. Best pushing across the map on his own. Muta's dying. DT's in the mix. I'm not sure there's enough circling stuff here. Dark Archon kind of A-moving into his own death. Nope. Wanders on through. Okay. Army... Oh, 170 to 105 supply, but... Adrenalings and Lurkers are free inside your house. Storm cleaning them up. Zealots on the finish up there. All the Lurkers are dying. And I think if this army can't be dealt with, then I think Solki is going to be forced to tap out. Lurkers without Dark Swarm are not going to be enough here. Free Defiler. That's your GG. That's it. Best doesn't have a huge army, but he has cleaned up the Ling attack inside of his main. Um, enough. <laughs> enough. As finally, these lings get cleared out. This army continuing to push up. Dragoons, Archons, Dark... Oh, Dark Templar. Never mind. Dead. This Dark Archon is still alive. Amazing. He's not much of a threat because he doesn't have any energy, but the Hydralisk den down. Not going after this third base as much. And that's it, man. Sulky taps out. Best is your winner with a Dark Archon, Archon, Zealot, Dragoon, High Templar strat. Very nice. Oh, now the question is, if Sulky doesn't drop here, is he better able to hold off this attack? Because he's got Adrenalings, and they're pretty good if they can surround Archons, and if they can surround Dragoons, they'll die real fast. High Templar's got 13 kills and enough energy for another Storm, though. I don't know. Like, maybe the Lings just all die to High Templar. It's hard to say. These Lings didn't accomplish a whole lot down here. They killed a Gateway. Um, like a Pylon, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if the Lings being there would be enough. But what it really came down to is this 12 o'clock base of Soul Key dying and the 6 o'clock base of Best dying. Which sets us back to a 3 base versus a 3 base. And Best is extremely okay with that. He's down to 14 probes and he wins anyway, though. That was... <sighs> That's scary. That is a scary close finish. Like, scary. Scary close finish. Wow. Well done. I mean, 114 supply and with 14 probes and you win in a ZVP against Soul Key, that is not an extremely normal situation. Best is like, whew, thank goodness. I mean, this drop would have worked except for the fact that Best was already here. He was already knocking on your front door. And when a Protoss player is knocking on your front door, you're probably just going to die. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe. That was fantastic. We had Plague, we had Dark Swarm, we had Storm, we had Feedback, we had Maelstrom. The spellcasting today was through the roof in only 21 minutes too. Action packed. Started with a Hydra Bust. That best defended pretty well, pretty ably, I would say. Once those speed lots came out, that really changed everything. And then Sulky was just laid on his fourth. And when he got it, it died. I mean, I don't think he'd even saturated it before it went down, so that was bad. And his ability to kill the 6 o'clock at best kind of kept him in the game, but... At the end of the day, he just didn't have enough. He didn't have enough Dark Swarm. He didn't have enough Adrenalings. Hydra's good answer to Archons for sure. Archons and Dragoons for sure. But just not enough of them. And the Protoss gets the win. So nice. I think that's the first Protoss win in a PBZ we've had in a week. So Protoss stands. Be happy. 143,000 points from Bess. 124,000 points from Soul Key. Did outproduce the Protoss player by about a 2 to 1 ratio. More than that, kill-death ratio here was also bigger. So that ha that explains the ability for the Protoss to win. 28 to 2 on the buildings raised. Dang. Sulky raised 28 buildings today. That's a lot. To only two Zerg buildings. <coughs> and at the end of the day here, uh, bested out spend Sulky by about 4,000 resources. A little bit less than that in 21 minutes. Good enough. Good enough, I say. So that right there is good gonna be it from me so this has been falcon paladin coming at you with yet another edition of starcraft brood war remastered go ahead hit that like button hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today you can also catch me on twitter facebook patreon and twitch all at slash falcon paladin and until next time as always thank you so much for watching and you take care of yourself